Welcome neighbors. My name is Lauren Paget. I am one of the co-pastors at St. Paul's United Church of Christ in Pekin, Illinois. And uh, we are gathering this morning to do worship together virtually. Um, we are in uncharted territory for St. Paul, um, at least from doing worship in our homes and videotaping it and getting it to all of you. So we appreciate your uh, patience during this time as we continue to grow and adapt and uh, see how pliable we can be. Um, but uh, the folks and the people of St. Paul United Church of Christ are a people that really want to share uh, community, hospitality, and welcome with all of you. So that's why we're going ahead and doing what we're doing today with worship uh, virtually, worship online. Uh, so welcome to St. Paul Online. I would like to first invite you to a, uh, a, a few words that will call us into a time of worship. God, sometimes the days are long, the nights are even longer, and we're so tired. And then you soothe us and bring us to gentle places. Gracious God, you are a shepherd and we don't need a thing. Sometimes life is moving too fast and we can't find a moment to breathe. And then you surround us with stillness and bring an even rhythm to our breath. Gracious God, you are our shepherd and we don't need a thing. Sometimes we're, we're parched and it seems nothing will quench our thirst. We're famished and we can't find anything to eat. And then you ref refresh and fill us. Loving God, you are our shepherd and we don't need a thing. Sometimes in the valley it is dark and the shadows are heavy and we're afraid. But then we feel your strength and we have courage. Loving God, you are our shepherd and we don't need a thing. There are the times when it seems we're up against the world. And loving God, you show those who push the hardest that you have called us to serve. You touch us and we are blessed. We will praise you and, and dwell with you forever, gracious one. We will worship Gracious God, this day and always. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Magnificent God, who sees all that we can see and everything that we cannot, we gather in awe of your vision that is broad and vast. Be with us now as we worship you. Awaken us to your holiness. Inspire us with your creative power. And peel back our layers of anxiety and fear. Enliven us to trust fully in your love for us as we struggle and strive to be who you call us to be. In Christ's holy name, amen. I would be remiss, friends, if I uh, did not share with you that part of our liturgy today will be um, coming from God's vision is broad and vast, service prayers for the fourth Sunday of Lent, which was written by the Reverend Kim Wood, who is the Acting Associate Conference Minister of the Illinois Conference of the United Church of Christ. Likewise, I will be reading uh, scripture today from the New Revised Standard Version. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the 23rd Psalm. Even for those of us who are not necessarily uh, church types, and certainly those of us who don't know the Bible that well, um, and maybe don't even care to, uh, we probably have heard um, some snippets, at least, of the 23rd Psalm, and it will bring some familiarity uh, to many of us, if not uh, um, most of us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. 
Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And then our second reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. And um, I won't be reading every single verse uh, of uh, those 41 verses, so you don't have to worry about that. I will be paraphrasing some of those verses and just giving you the thumbnail version. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. I'll interject here that uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Osvaldo Baina uh, suggests that a better translation might be, Neither this man nor his parents sinned but in order that God's works might be revealed revealed in him, it is necessary for us to work the works of the one who sent me. Now, this translation conclusively affirms that at least in this case, there is no connected connection between sickness and sin. Therefore, Jesus must do the work of God and heal the man. So we pick up again with verse 5. As long as I am in the world... I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made some mud and the saliva and spread the the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. Now at this time, uh, the neighbors uh, got word of the fact that this man uh, all of a sudden could see again, or could see. He had never been able to see. He was born blind. So people started saying, is this the same guy? Or is this somebody else that just happens to look like him? And so the the neighbors are kind of kibitzing amongst themselves and arguing. And um, the man says, well, you know, I, this guy told me to, uh, to, after he had made some mud, he put it on my eyes and he said, go to this pool and uh, washing it. So I did, and I was healed. So then we pick up again with verse 15, uh, because at that time, uh, the neighbors brought uh, um, the man to the Pharisees because they couldn't make sense out of it. So then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened, and he said to the the Pharisees, He is a prophet. So then the people uh, take the man um, to his parents and they continue to um, say, you know, what's the story? Is this not your son? And they want to know what happened. How did this happen? And so they continue to bicker and and the bottom line is this healing that, that Jesus did really made uh, the leaders and even the average people, the neighbors of the community, very uncomfortable. So then we pick up with verse 24. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. 
And they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And here, friends, it almost gets rather comical because the blind man answers him, or I should say the sighted man answers them by, sa by saying, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they re reviled him, asking, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. And then the man answered, he, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worshiped him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out of town. That was it. So then Jesus receives word that he had been outcast, and Jesus goes and finds him. And Jesus asks him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for, for judgment so that those who do not see me may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near, near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have, have sin. But now that you say, We see your sin, your sin remains. So there's the story. It's a story of a blind man, and he basically, um, in the end, uh, like I said, it's kind of a comical story. He kind of one-ups the Pharisees, you know, the people that are supposed to know um, about church, about God, about worship, about all those things that keep people in order. And they are bickering on whether or not this man has sinned or if his parents have sinned and how was it that he was actually healed. And um, we certainly are living in a time now that is unprecedented, at least um, from any uh current hi history that I am aware of, um, you know, when we think of pandemics, we think of the Black Plague or the uh, Spanish flu or, or some of these things that happened a long time ago. And here we are today in 2020, and we are living through uh, a time that none of us have seen before. And it's a time where... Uh, <laughs> You know, we've all, we've all heard it, you know, people are running to the store, they're trying to find toilet paper, cleaning supplies, you know, I've got my, my uh, disinfectant right here, um, and that just happened to be sitting there, um, but uh, I've got disinfectant, and I'm sure many of you do, um, being a person that has worked in healthcare uh, for many years as a chaplain. I uh, often take a hand sanitizer with me wherever I go. That hasn't changed. I still have hand sanitizer. And we have people that are going to the store. They, they are uncomfortable with what may happen. And yet, in some ways, we're being gifted with this time. We're being gifted with time to be at home, Shelter in place, as our governor here in the, the great state of Illinois have, has said, shelter in place. Only go to the store for necessities, go to the pharmacy 
for the drugs that you need, the um, prescription drugs that you need. And you may go to the gas station to get uh, gasoline uh, to go to and from those places. But otherwise, stay in place and just hunker down. Continue to wash your hands and um, try not to be in larger groups of no more than 10. So these are the times that we live. And like I said, I don't know that any of us have quite experienced anything like this that we're living through. And the words from the 23rd Psalm certainly do give us support and give us encouragement. I think the the most important part of it is maybe the way that many of us learned the 23rd Psalm um, as thou art with me. Thou art with me. My God, our God is with us. That's Emmanuel, God with us. So no matter where we are, whether or not we are in the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. Whether or not we are in green pastures, God is with us. It doesn't say uh, no matter where you are um, and in the midst of all this pandemic, uh, go hoard some toilet paper. It, it says, you know, just go ahead. Enjoy a cup overflowing. Enjoy um, some fresh living water. Enjoy um, the comfort that the simplicities of life can bring. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And so then we, we switch to the gospel lesson. It's a, and um, we hear this story of, it's kind of an ironic story. Uh, no one in the scene actually communicates with everybody else. You've got the neighbors questioning the person, and then you've got the man and being hauled off to the Pharisees, but no one seems to have really communicated with with the man before this. Not even his parents, really. They, they didn't want much to do with him, um, especially once he became healed, and um, they, it, it, that healing made the the Pharisees very uncomfortable. And so the the parents wanted to play it safe and say, you know, he's of age. You go ask him. We, we know nothing about it, but yeah, he's our son. So at least the parents owned him or admitted to having him as their son, but that's about it. Um, there was no community in this, in this uh, passage, really. Uh, you just have people doing their own things. And we sometimes have a society of people going and doing their own things. They're going to work. They're going to school. Um, they're going to the gym. They're going to uh, the restaurant, you know, or whatever. But they're just doing their own thing. Now that we can't go to... Uh, the recplex or to the gym or to the restaurant like we normally do or go to work. Uh, we have this kind of unsettled uh, schedule, unsettled routine. And perhaps it's a time to look around us and see those persons like the blind man that we might have been overlooking before. Maybe it's a time that we're being called to be community. And when those persons have been cast out of their community, like ultimately what happened to the blind man, we go to them. We go to them and we try to offer and provide for them. Perhaps this is the time that we have since our schedule has been wiped clean. Perhaps this is the time that God is calling us to slow down 
take a deep breath, and just lay in the green pastures. But God is also saying to you, I see you, and I want to heal you, and I love and accept you right where you are. And through the healing that I will give your physical body, I want you to have this desire to enter into a deeper relationship with me because I really matter. Because I'm the goodness in life that can give you life more abundantly. To bring you into a better life than what you have currently known. Not so much of a life that's worried about our stocks flying off the deep end. But worried about being in relationship. Going to the people that need to be healed. And being with the people that have been outcast. Perhaps today... You are one of those persons that needs to be healed, that needs to feel God's love, because you're just uncertain about what the future holds as well as the present. God sees you. Perhaps you are one of those persons that has been cast out of your community. God sees you. And God sends, Thou art with me. God sends Emmanuel. God sends Jesus and says, Believe in me because I will never abandon you or forsake you, for thou art with me always. It's a pretty amazing time that we're living in, friends. It really is. We have opportunities that are yet to be revealed. Go knowing that we have a God that is with you always, wherever you are. And God does indeed see you. Let God make a difference in your life today. Would you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we hear the, the prayers of your community, of your children, of the persons wherever they are that may hear these words. Give them each a time to simply lift up their, their words of prayer and concern and joy. And we lift all of them up to you as well. For you know, we know that you hear and see us. May we be, be aware of how you are continually walking with us. Wherever the road leads us. This we pray. Amen. Now hear these words as a benediction as you go forth today and they're based on Ephesians chapter 5 verses 9 through 14 for once you were in for once you were in darkness but now in the light you you are now but now in the lord you are light live as children of light seek that which is good and right and true and try to live in a way that pleases god Look to the light of God's love shown to us in Jesus and do not hide from it or ignore the struggles of the world, but awaken to God's call. Arise, O sleeper, and Christ will give you light and give you life more abundantly. Thank you, friends. Go in peace. Bye-bye.